Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. Genesis chapter 9, verse 20 is where we resume our study today. Remember, you can study all of the Bible with me, just exactly how we're doing it today, using my audio Bible messages. Study with me at thebibleversebyverse.com for complete series going through the entire Bible, verse by verse, are there for you to take advantage of. All you have to do is choose, click, and listen. Study any part of the Bible at your pace, at your convenience. That's at the Bible, verse by verse dot com. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Genesis 9, verse 20. And Noah began to be a farmer, and he planted a vineyard. Noah did what he knew how to do. So he was probably a farmer before the flood. And now, after 121 years of building that ark and being on that ark, Noah goes back to his old job. And we see from this that no one pampered Noah. Instead, he had to earn his living through hard work. He was all about hard work, certainly. Building that ship for a hundred years, preaching as he did it, before that being a farmer, now being a farmer again. Verse 21. And he drank of the wine and became drunk, and he was uncovered within his tent. And we see from this that God destroyed sinners in the flood, but he did not destroy sin, because man still has a sin nature, and we see it right, right here, working in Noah. Noah, like anyone else, who God has ever declared to be righteous, is righteous by faith and not by the way he acts. Noah was a man of faith, but he was not perfect, and he sinned. And one sin generally leads to another. Verse 22, And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father, and told to his two brethren outside. Ham was in trouble, and so was his son Canaan. The original language suggests that Ham went out after seeing his drunken father. Ham went out and made a joke about his father's drunkenness and nakedness. And you can tell an awful lot about someone by what they think is funny. Laughing at dirty jokes. Laughing at sexually suggestive, sinful jokes. Enjoying movies which display blatant sin. Being entertained by music that is ungodly and has an unbiblical message. That's the sin of Ham. Those are the sins of Ham. Meaning that it's rejoicing being entertained in some way by unrighteousness. 23. And Shem and Japheth, those would be Noah's two other sons, took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father and their faces were backward, and they saw not their father's nakedness. So Shem and Japheth, unlike Ham, their brother, did not laugh at their father. Instead, they covered their father up. 24. And Noah awoke from his wine, and knew what his younger son had done unto him. Now, keep in mind, that in the Bible, a grandson is sometimes referred to as a son, which is the case with Canaan here. It was not Noah's son, Ham, 
who did something bad. But it was his grandson, Canaan, who did something bad. And Noah found out about it. So Noah, so Noah said something. He uttered, which means that Noah, inspired by the Holy Spirit, speaks a prophecy about Canaan's conduct and concerning Canaan's offspring. And it was not good. Look at 25. He said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants, shall he be unto his brethren. Canaan became the father of a race of no good, immoral sinners called the Canaanites. These people that were the offspring of Canaan were filthy and guilty of the worst forms of depravity, the worst forms of sin and idolatry, and God could not stand it. God gave the Canaanites many years to repent. Actually, he gave them four centuries at least, but they didn't. They were cursed because of their sin, and so they were destroyed. 26, and he said, blessed be the Lord God. This is Noah speaking. Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Cana shall be his servant. From Shem came the Jews. And just as Noah predicted, they were blessed by God. Did you ever hear the, the, the phrase uh, Semites? That comes from the fact that they were, the Jews are the offspring of Shem. Shemites or Semites, the son of Noah. And as I said, the Jews were blessed by being the people of God who, cho who he chose to work through to reach out and offer salvation to the entire world. And of course, the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, came from the line of Shem. The descendants of Shem, the Jews, were blessed to receive the written word of God and the Savior, all through the Jewish race. 27, and it says, And God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Cana shall be his servant. So from Shem to Japheth. Now, it says that Japheth shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan will be his servant as well. And we are probably a descendant of Japheth, those of us who live in America. Well, it's not the case so much anymore, but probably still a majority, as well as Western Europe, because they, the descendants of Japheth, spread out and eventually settled in Europe. And then they migrated to America. So the first immigrants to America were Shemites, I'm sorry, were the offspring of Japheth. So Noah predicted by the word of God that there would be a connection between the Jews and Western civilization, meaning a connection between the Jews and Europe and the United States. And that connection certainly came through Jesus Christ. Christianity is not just the the traditional religion of Western Europe and America. And, and, and Christianity is actually the thing that developed Western society. We are blessed beyond all others because of our connection to Christ. This is what God meant when he said, and he, Japheth, shall dwell in the tents of Shem. We share in the blessings of Shem's descendants, who are the Israelites. Verse 28, and Noah lived after the flood 350 years, and all the days of Noah were 950 years, and he died. Noah, he sure saw an awful lot in his lifetime, didn't he? Think about it. Noah saw the old world. He saw the old world for centuries with all of its terrible wickedness. He saw the old world with the ungodly offspring 
of fallen angels and human women. He saw the Nephilim, the giants, the meanness, the destruction, the murder that they perpetrated. He saw the wickedness that was rampant in the entire world. He lived through that as an outsider, spiritually speaking. And then he saw that old world's destruction. And of course, Noah saw a new beginning. He came out of the ark and he started the human race all over again with his three sons. And he lived long enough, another 300 and some years here, to see an increase in sin once again. Noah lived to see the building of the Tower of Babel. So he lived to see the confusion of languages and the scattering of his offspring. Noah died, actually, only 32 years before Abraham was born. And Noah was born only a few decades after Adam died. So think of that. Noah spanned the time from a couple of decades, a few decades, from Adam, the first human being created directly by God, to just 32 years before Abraham, the progenitor of the Jewish race in the Messianic line, was born. Boy, did he see an awful lot. Of course, he lived 900 and some years there. So 900, what does it say? 950 years. Be great, as long as you're healthy. Well, I'm not going to read chapter 10, verses 1 through 31, because those are just names. And I'm not going to read 31 verses full of names. But I will read the 31st verse. These are the sons of Shem, after their families, after their tongues, in their lands, after their nations. So the reason that God included the genealogy of Shem, Ham, and Japheth was to show us the origin of the different nations that are in the world today. And I remember in Bible college, we went into great detail about where the descendants of the three sons of Noah settled and the countries that developed from them. I don't have any of that information anymore. I don't have any of my notes or even my textbook anymore. I wish I did. I'd share it with you. But it is interesting. and I'm sure you can get information on that probably online pretty easily nowadays. 32. These are the families of the sons of Noah after their generations in their nations. And by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. So <clears throat> they were divided. They were divided and they were spread abroad, but not right away. They didn't spread out and become separate nations until God forced them to. I think we're going to stop right here, and we'll pick it up in chapter 11 next time, and we'll see one of the big events in the Bible, and that's the Tower of Babel and the confusion of the languages. So make sure you join me next time. We'll pick it up right here. In the meantime, of course, you can study all of the Bible with me as much as you want to, any time that you want to, using my audio Bible messages at the thebibleversebyverse.com. Just choose, click, and listen. If you would like to be a part of Scripture Verse by Verse, you can be by praying for me and praying for God's Word. And also, when you take a break from studying at the thebibleversebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the Donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. Until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. Thank you for studying with me. I look forward to our next message and our next lesson. Until then, so long.